You know the copy and paste professionals? You don't know them. Copy and paste people are of such, okay? They have nothing to do. They're sitting at home most likely, I'm assuming. This has given him the benefit of the doubt. They're sitting at home with no, nothing. Just watching YouTube videos and listening to the various speakers. Huh? Then they see this one speaker, they listen to an hour lecture, they catch one thing he said. That could be interpreted in many ways, but they give it the worst interpretation. Huh? Then they go fetching for his email or some way to contact him. And then they finally find him, then they have the standard email. Huh? The copy and paste. Ibn Sirin said, Rahimahullah, this deen is this knowledge is deen. So let one of you look who is he taking his deen from? Another copy and paste. And they quote a few statements of our righteous predecessors, huh? Let's they say out of context, and then they send them to you. If you react the way they want you to react, you pass the exam, you become the sheikh of the time and the person who's referred to. You fail the test. Oh, oh, oh. No, you're the enemy of the deen. And you should be exterminated. And uh, you, they go, you know, you will say, what's going on in the world? Ya akhi, inta, you copied and pasted, ya sheikh, you don't even have this thing memorized. Huh? You, you don't even know what you're talking about. When you quote something Ibn Sirin said, I don't know how many years ago, or any one of the Salaf, Ya Akhi Al-Aziz, you have to understand the context, the historical context at least. You have to speak to the people according to their understanding. What applied then may not necessarily apply now. The times have changed, people have changed. You have to modify without compromising in order to get to the people. It's called wisdom and da'wah. Something that many of them lack. They think they're adhering strongly by actually lacking wisdom. And wisdom is the opposite of that. There was a hadith, an authentic hadith, about a man and his son. And his son was a, a virtual sahabi. And his father told him when he knew that the Prophet ﷺ had, um, had returned from one of the expeditions and they had some war booty. Huh? He said to his son, let's go to Muhammad, see what we will get from him. Let's see what kind of, you know, what he will give us of, of you know, goods and, and uh, money and things of the sort. And he had a very, you know, very strong voice. He, you could identify his voice from a distance. So as they came close to the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ heard his voice. And he knew what was going on. So he automatically went to his uh, uh, hujra and he got him a thawb. A jilbab, you know, a jubba, they call it back then. A nice garment, beautified and adorned and everything. And he came and said, and not only the sahabi explained, he showed it to his father. He said, look at this and look at that. He tried to show him the beautiful, beautiful aspects of this garment. Huh? And he said, I have prepared this for you. I have, I have kept this specifically for you. So the man smiled. So the Prophet ﷺ four times repeated, I forgot his name now, Fulan has become pleased, Fulan has become pleased, Fulan has become pleased, Fulan has become pleased. As if, as if him becoming pleased is a big achievement, even though technically speaking it is not. But this is the wisdom of the Prophet ﷺ in dealing with the situation. This is how we dealt with the people depending on the situation. He went and got a garment because this will pave the way for you to do many different things. Even though this person they had an issue. So nowadays you may have to be in, in with people or in contacting people, communicate, communicating with people whom the people branded as whatever. Because there's a greater wisdom and benefit in that. Versus saying, you are there and we are here, and therefore let's just all go and, and beat each other up while the Christians move on with their missionary work. There's, there's wisdom, there's, there's you know, insight which some people lack. And therefore the da'wah is destroyed.